Welcome to my step-by-step -step guide of making a fully authentic and realistic shotgun replica. The finished product can be used as wool pride or as a prop for film and theater, if you like. The process is not too difficult, but it requires some basic handyman skills. Having previous experience from wood carving or other arts and crafts is a huge advantage. Boy. Take a look at the photograph. That's me, the author, holding my homemade shotgun and wearing a fake beard. Oh yeah. Shut up, kitty cat. Not now. The purpose of this tutorial is to make a model weapon for exhibition, wall pride, or home movies, theater, television, and so on. However, if you decide to use the shotgun for robbing banks, sexual harassment, threatening your math teacher because he gave you a bad grade, or as an aide to commit adultery, I'll not be held responsible, okay? Okay, Sammy? As far as shotgun goes, there's a lot of different models and designs. It's models all the way from the late 18th century till today. But I preferred more modern shotguns like the Mossberg 500 and the Remington 870. But you don't have to make an already existing model, you can let your imagination run loose and come up with your own shotgun design or rifle for that matter. Right below you see three different shotgun designs I drafted. The first two is based on classic shotgun designs like Remington 870 and the Winchester rifle. The third was my own design, but it was a lot more complex to build so I chose the Remington 870 shotgun instead. And like I said we're gonna build a Remington 870 style shotgun for this tutorial. That means a semi pistol grip stock. And if you take a look at the picture above, you can see my finished shotgun. It was made exactly the way I'm describing in this tutorial. It looks pretty good too. But is this expensive? No. Not if you compare it to buying a real one. Not at all. Now let's take a look on how my previous shotgun builds look on film. Now this first scene is from our ultimate flop, Hubba Joe's not so excellent adventure. The finished film turned out to be totally crap. Like the worst movie I've ever made. At least the shotguns looks nice. Now get that little woodpecker! Now Cletus, why the hell are you yelling? Oh. Well, this next scene is from my one and only cooking show. If it ain't little Mr. Chicken. And this is the scene where I'm out shopping for groceries. And without the shotgun, this wouldn't be funny at all. Don't worry. I won't hurt you. And this is from our action-packed sequel to Silent Night Deadly Rampage. The main character's weapon of choice was of course an old 12 gauge, so my homemade double barrel got a lot of cool screen time on this one. Silent Night Deadly Rampage 2. Here's a little sketch I made containing all the parts involved building this fine piece. All of these parts has to be made in order to get the puzzle to fit. So I recommend you familiarize yourself with all the parts before we go on to the next step. Or you can press print screen and save it as a picture file so you can look at it later. And in this episode we're gonna make a stock from a solid block of wood. Then we're gonna make the forend slash grip and finally the barrel guide which consists of a pipe slightly smaller in the barrel, with a bolt attached to the end. Now first you're gonna need a 2x6, approximately 50 centimeters long. Then we're gonna draw out the basic shape of a shotgun. I recommend using a real shotgun or a rifle to do this. But if the real deal is not available, I can send you a schematic so you can draw a stock on your own, without using a real shotgun as a template. Now just grab a good pen or a carpenter's pencil and start drawing the outline of the stock. I'm using an old rifle stock I made a few years back as a template. And after you're done, it should look something like this. And now for some details. Measure 34 centimeters from the stock end. And then 39 centimeters and make a mark on both places. Now just finish up the lines, like this. Then you're gonna measure up 2.5 centimeters from above. 
this is the guideline for a barrel that comes on later, so just make sure it's even all the way. Then draw another line that's one centimeter from the first line. This line will soon be the transition between the stock and the receiver house, and we're just gonna call it Battle Guide. Don't judge me. Now measure up 10 centimeters from the first line and make a mark on 10. Never mind the line in between. That was just bullshit because my brain measured it wrong. It happens. A lot. Now the fun begins. Just grab an electric saw and start cutting out the basic shape of the stock. Once you're done cutting out the basic shape, we're gonna focus on these lines. Yes, you have to focus on these lines. Comprende? On the first mark, you just cut down to the line below, and no further. While on the second mark, you just cut the whole damn thing clean off. Like this. And all that remains now is to cut along the guide track, where the barrel comes on later. Just make sure you cut even. Yes, I emphasize even. It has to be even. Once that's done, you grab a coarse wood rasp and start grinding off excess wood. And after a while of hard work, it starts to look like a stock. And you should have something that looks like this. Now we're about to begin making the transition between the stock and receiver house. And if your cutting skills are as bad as mine, you need to even it out to make sure it's even. Like this. The next step is to make the one centimeter line we drew earlier go all around the front of the stock. Remember to be precise. Then grab a small hacksaw and make a cut that goes along the line, but no deeper than 6 millimeters. And once you made it all the way around, make sure it's again even. This is very important to make the transition between the stock and the rest of the gun as smooth as possible. And before long, it should look like this. A nice straight line that goes all the way around. But remember what I said earlier about not cutting it too deep. And that'll just make the whole thing a lot more prone to breaking, like a sissy girl. Then grab a MacGyver approved Swiss Army knife and start chipping off the wood and make a small plateau. This will be the transition between the stock and the rest of the gun. And after you're done using the MacGyver approved knife, it should look like this. Now leave the MacGyver approved Swiss Army knife alone and grab a flat file and use it around the area we just chiseled. The goal here is to make the plateau match the height of the file all the way around. And if it does, you did a great job, and we're on the right path. Now we need to sand the stock so it gets as smooth as silk, even though I hate silk. The best way at this point is to use an electric sander with some place between 40 and 60 grain paper. That should give the best result for now. And after a while it's time to switch to a finer grain paper, and just keep going. The sanding is probably the most time consuming step of this build. However, boring as it may be, it's highly needed to get that smooth finish. Now use some of the leftover wood and measure up 6cm wide and 22cm long. This is for the pump action grip. And when you're done, just grab your saw. Anyway, once the piece has been cut out, just grab the coarse rasp and start rounding the bottom like I'm doing here. This might take a while, but it's too early to use the electric sander at this point. But once you're done, it should look like this. The next step is to draw two lines, one on each side, approximately one centimeter from the edge, like this. Then use a hammer and a flat wood carving tool to trace the lines, but be careful not to split or crack the wood, or else you have to start all over again, and that's not cool. And now for another fun activity, use the carving tool to dig down. And not to break your spirit or anything, but this takes a crap load of time. It's insane. And there's also the risk at some tiring point where you may accidentally stab yourself with the carving tool. Like of course I did. Hand versus carving tool equals pain. Grab a piece of a 20mm steel pipe and make damn sure it fits the forehand perfectly. Now start sanding the inside and make sure all sharp and jagged edges is removed so don't grind on the barrels. Sand the outside as well. And as you can see here, I made a level gradient like most shotgun grips has. This is just for aesthetic purposes, but it looks better with than without. So, now we're gonna make a guide track for the magazine barrel. This is to hold the forehand in place. And for this we need plumber's epoxy, a great invention. The consistency is almost like Play-Doh, except when it hardens it becomes very strong. It consists of two components, just make sure you mix them properly. Another smart move is applying some grease to the steel so the magazine barrel don't stick. Then you just apply the plumber's epoxy around the upper edge so the barrel will be held in place vertically. But this won't be enough to hold it in place permanently. But don't worry, 
I got just the right stuff. Guidelines regarding the use of glass fiber and polyester. The product consists of two main components, the polyester and the hardener. You will need a small container of proper size in order to mix the base component with the hardener. First, you screw the lid of the hardener and gently puncture the seal. Then pour in 90% polyester and 10% hardener in the mixture. I've been to hell and back, Sammy. So I don't like taking instructions from anyone, okay? Well, like the good lady said, about 90% polyester and 10% harder mixed together in a small container. Like this empty box of schnaz, for example. Just remember not to use too much hardener. And I also recommend using gloves, since this stuff contains chemicals as well as being very sticky. Use a piece of plastic or something to mix the components well, until it gets a slightly darker color. Like this. Now it might be a good idea to cover the magazine barrel with some cardboard in between, but that's just optional. Then place some small sheets of fiberglass on top of the epoxy mask we put on earlier. Then just smear the polyester over the fiberglass sheets till they are covered. Allow this to dry and repeat the procedure one more time, till you get something that looks like this. In order to speed up the hardening you can grab a gas torch and wave it over for a few minutes. Just be careful not to allow the flames to come in contact with it. This is for a number of reasons. Number one. This crap is very flammable. Number two, the chemicals smell even worse when lit on fire. And number three, just not with you idiot. <laughs> and once the polyester is hardened, it's back to sanding. And like before, just remove all jagged edges and try to get it as smooth as possible all over. And occasionally check that the magazine barrel fits the piece perfectly. And that there's no sharp edges grinding on the steel. There will be some ugly corners, so just use some plumber's epoxy to soften them out. But don't overdo it. Then the barrel eventually won't fit the piece. So just use what's needed. And since I sanded it pretty good all over now, I'm gonna cover it with masking tape for the next step. I also placed some paper on the inside to absorb eventual spill. So the next step is to mix some more polyester and use it as a protective layer on top of the epoxy and the fiberglass. Just like this. Now just wrap the stock in some paper and place it in a vise. The paper is just to avoid scratches. Just make sure it's firmly in place before we go on. Then use a pipe slightly smaller than the barrels, about 30cm long and with an 8-10mm to 10 millimeter bolt attached to the end. And making one of these is pretty simple, so all you need is... A bolt and two nuts, a plasm glue between, till it looks mean. Oh plasm glue right here, don't forget to use epoxy mouse so it fits better. Don't touch me. Anyway, once this piece has been made, place it on the upper end of the stock and drill a hole the same size as the bolt. Just be careful not to crack the stock, and limit the hole to about 2-3cm, to three centimeters, no more. Once you're done with the drill, just carefully mount the piece and drive it nice and easy, till it's stuck. Now use some epoxy mask to make support for the pipe. Make sure it's straight and not skewered in any way, since this is what's going to support the barrel eventually. So don't be cheap, use a significant amount of epoxy so it will stay strong. And now let's see, we just made a stock. We succeeded in making a nice pump action grip. And we made a barrel guide, as well as mounting it on the stock. So that means we're done with part one. Next time we're gonna make the receiver in another detailed and insane step-by-step -step adventure of prop gun making. So till next time, stay tuned and please remember to subscribe.